Hey guys, Devin here from American Aquarium. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be going over a presentation I gave some time ago about an illness in the hobby that's a little misunderstood. Most of the time when we have illness with fish, it's from other things like parameters, stressors. This particular disease is transmitted through fish. So that means the fish that are heavily bred in the hobby from the wholesalers gets transmitted through these large groups of fish and then ultimately to us in the hobby. So stick with me to know how to spot this disease, how to prevent this disease, and ultimately treat them. There are two different types, which does make it important to know how to treat them correctly. Hey guys, Devin here from American Aquarium. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to do this talk about, I guess what I'd call a mystery illness. It happened to a certain group of fish that are more popular to keep in the hobby. It can, but someone may not know how to look this illness up to find out the right way to treat it. So I want to come at this as, hey, the most common fish like tetras, danios, angels, the things that are more tropical community fish can end up with this disease. And you may not notice that it's happening until the end. The illness is known to be harder to treat when you're in the later stages of what's going on with the fish. But if you could pick up some clues about the illness before it gets too bad, or at least have an understanding that this is what it could be, then you'll be able to have much more success and also be able to know how to prevent the disease before it happens. I'll first go over the initial symptoms of what we can see with the fish before I actually get into the details of what it actually could be and then how to treat it. So this would be that we're starting to see that the fish is becoming less active, more withdrawn, more agitated when say it's the daytime and there's a lot of activity but the first sign that you're going to see is that it's going to come withdrawn then after this you see it become more erratic is, is it swimming crashing you turn on the lights it scurries away the next step is that the fish has difficulty swimming at this point treatments will usually fail then from this point the tail will become whitish the body will start to look like it's deforming even even to the point of possibly curving and then getting more lumpy as in like it's starting to deteriorate. You might see white of the muscle coming through the skin. This is usually caused by a sporozoan. A sporozoan is a parasitic spore forming protozoan which reproduces sexually and asexually in alternate generations by means of spores. This spore zone infestation is very difficult to treat and basically impossible to treat in later st stages of infestation, which is when most Aquarius first notice the disease. However, contrary to popular belief, it is somewhat treatable in the early stages and very preventable if we can follow certain steps. So here is how a spore zone gets introduced to a fish. The disease cycle begins when the parasitic spore enters the fish after the fish ingests infected food or organic debris such as the body of a dead fish or live or live foods like tuba flex worms after the spores enter the intestinal tract the newly hatched embryos burrow through the intestinal wall and produce cysts within the muscle tissue these muscles containing the cysts begin to die resulting in a pale whitish tissue Okay guys, now I'll use the name of the infection that these diseases most of the time go by, which many times are diagnosed incorrectly, which is Neon Tetra Disease and False Neon Tetra Disease. Hey again guys, I want to jump in at this point and re-explain this part of the video just to make it a little more clear. So now when I'm talking about Neon Tetra Disease, this is going to be the gram negative illness that's going to require this first treatment. And then for false neon tetra disease, it's going to be the gram positive second treatment that I talk about. All right, now back to the video. Here's the treatment steps for the gram negative sporozoan disease. First and foremost, stop the spread of the disease. Remove all infected fish from the main aquarium if possible, along with the use of a true UV sterilizer on the main aquarium. A bath of methylene blue is the first step. To prepare the bath, use one to two teaspoons of 2.3% methylene blue solution per five gallons in a bath of aquarium water from the tank the fish you wish to treat came from. We usually use about a half a gallon of water. For the AAP methylene blue, four to 10 drops 
per gallon should work. Measurement of the methylene blue does not need to be precise as the bath should only be about 30 minutes and the methylene blue can be safely overdosed for fish in baths, dips, and hospital tanks. However, overdosing in an established aquarium can hurt the beneficial nitrifying bacteria. This bath's effectancy can be improved further with the addition of salt at one teaspoon per gallon and metronidazole at double the normal intake dose recommended by manufacturer. For more information on how to correctly perform a medicated bath, please see our resources in the description. For this bath, make sure that you have the water in a warm area that is not going to cool down during the bath process. And do not pour this water back into the main aquarium. Adding nitrofurazone to this bath at double recommended tank dose can improve results. Areathromycin can be substituted, especially for the gram-positive false neon tetra disease. This bath is helpful for both true neon tetra disease and false neon tetra disease. For in-tank treatment, we recommend the use of nalodinic acid at just one dose, and then after 24 hours doing a water change, if all fish are not affected, we recommend a hospital tank for this, although Neon Tetra disease picks off fish one by one in the display aquarium, which is where treating the display aquarium becomes required. Nalidic acid at double dose can be used in lieu of nitrofurazone and can be combined with methylene blue in the bath. Alternative intake treatments include Paragard Parasite, or Super Ick Plus, combined with either nitrofurazone or metronidazole. Another alternative is the use of AAP myosin in the main aquarium, although this is more effective for false neon tetra disease. And then of course AAP recommends using the medicated wonder shell as a follow-up treatment. We continue this in-tank treatment for 7 to 10 days. If all possible, we recommend using a UV sterilizer after the treatment or after the removal of sick or dead fish. This device will help in the spread of the disease and improve the aquarium redox. Here are in the order of the most common misdiagnosed causes of neon tetra disease. Ammonia or nitrate poisoning, poor sick stock which was recently purchased, often suffering from the residual effects of ammonia poisoning due to poor shipping and handling or simply genetics. Long-term poor aquarium health maintenance procedures. This includes regular water changes and vacuuming, aquarium chemistry methods, and more. Even lighting can play a major role in fish's health. The most common disease that's misdiagnosed as fish tetra disease is culminaris. And finally, to give a little more information about false neon tetra disease, this false infection often does not have the symptoms leading up to the white pale tissue and the discoloration is more faint and much less white than the true neon tetra disease. For the treatment of this disease, you will want a gram positive cocktail such as erythromycin and possibly adding things like the medicated wonder shell, AAP super velvet, or canamycin. Please do know that the combinations of these medications are extremely hard on the biofilter, so the use in a quarantine tank or a hospital tank is strongly recommended. A lesser strength in-tank treatment, but less harmful to the biofilter, would be something like cordon herbal ick attack. Here are a few important steps summarizing how to prevent both neon tetra disease and false neon tetra disease. Maintenance and optimal water chemistry. This includes zero ammonia nitrates, a stable pH, and not too low of a pH. A balanced redox, which includes high oxygen levels, and also reducers combating the oxidative stress in the aquarium, and a constant supply of mineral cations. Quarantine, or at least the use of fish baths for all new fish. Removal of all effective fish from your main stock, along with true level one or level two sterilization with a high output UVC lamp. And of course, for more prevention steps, please take a look at the article in the description below. All right guys, I hope that made some sense to you and helped you diagnose this mystery disease that you have. If you guys have any questions, do please ask. And I wanna thank you guys all again for supporting us here at American Aquarium Products. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.